What's up, you guys? It's Twinless Twin. We're back mastering artist, talent, phoenix, and pioneer, getting you ready for your next pioneer tournament or RC. So uh, we are halfway through a league, and this is part two of the video. If you haven't already, check out part one. Um, but this is the deck that we're playing. So far, we've kind of determined we don't love Demi Lich, but we're still giving it a good try. The theory being that with artist talent, you have a lot of ways to, to kind of loot through your deck and... Uh, Demulich being the closest thing to a fifth Arclight Phoenix, uh, we wanted to give it a try. We have some some extra cards for demons. We've got the Beacon Bolts and the Crackling Drakes, which should help make our demons match up a very solid one again. Um, and overall, just feeling very good about where our list is at right now and excited to finish out this league and get you guys some more gameplay. Have you been trying this deck? Let me know in the comments. Uh, I think that it's a really fun one to play, and I highly recommend trying it out. Casting Treasure Cruise is a hell of a drug, and this is the only format you can do it, um, besides vintage, technically, I guess. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I really recommend trying this deck out. It's really fun, has very unique play style, and is very powerful right now. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Well, while we wait for an opponent, um, the other switch I made was the Into the Flood Maw, which is replacing a Fiery Impulse, and that's also a concession to demons, but also just trying to make our deck a little bit more well-rounded versus the, the non-creature decks. Um, I think Bounce Spells are very good in Phoenix because you can often get that card advantage back pretty easily with uh, you know some Treasure Cruises. All right, so we got a match. All right, I don't really love this hand. Um, the problem with it is it's very reactive. So you're kind of forced to hope that your opponent plays into your plan. But like if these spell pierces aren't live, which they very might well might not be, uh, and say, for example, you get like thought seized or something, you're already in, in a hole pretty much. Uh, if we knew the matchup, this hand is keepable in some matchups, probably the ones where like spell pierce is really good, like enigmatic. But even then, you still have, like, the Into the Flood on the Fiery Impulse, so I'm happy to mulligan here. On the whole, Phoenix mulligans very well, uh, and so always good to keep that in mind. All right, I'm fine putting back a Cruise. This hand is also pretty slow, but I think we'll work with it. Um... I have two storm carve. Oh no, I'm playing against Lotus Field. This is a tricky matchup and one where it's really important that you know the matchup you're playing ahead of time. Like I would have definitely kept that spell pierce hand in this matchup and actually probably had a really good chance of winning um, because the double spell pierce would force them to have a natural Lotus Field, not Sylvan Scrying or any of those spells. But without knowing now they're just kind of able to probably goldfish me pretty easily game one, and we'll have to try to win the post-board games. Okay, so it turns out they had a natural lotus field. So the pierce might not actually have been that effective. But do they also have like Sylvan Scrying or something here, or what's going on? Hidden strings, wow. So they're going for something here. Arch Druid's Charm. Okay. I feel like seeing the Steam Vents turn one, from my perspective on their side, I would not have done that. Like, I would have saved the Hidden Strings, but... Um, they chose to, to make that play. 
like the hidden strings is very valuable and they just used it to speed up their arch druids charm by one turn but they probably had the time to to just wait Maybe their hand is just great already, and so they just uh, wanted to speed it up. Like, if they have Hidden Strings plus a, um, a Ultimatum, then that would totally make sense to me that they make that play. Pour over the pages. That's another another thing that would make it make sense. Discarding a Merchant Ultimatum. Well, that doesn't seem good. And then copying. I guess pouring doesn't make a ton of sense to me either there. Like, next turn they could pour and they actually gain a mana from it. Right? So that's kind of surprising. I mean, yeah, I could take this spell pierce, but I actually, yeah, I kind of think I have to hold up the spell pierce or I'm so likely to die. Seeing that they discarded emergent ultimatum, I think I'm probably dying anyways, but maybe there's a chance I don't die with the spell pierce up. Okay, they cast poor. If they didn't have an emergent ultimatum here, I would be shocked. <laughs> but at least this spell pierce makes them go. Also, they didn't leave a blue mana floating. So that's interesting. I guess I spell pierce this. It takes away their, their colored mana. We do have Brazen Borrower as like a way to bounce the uh, Omniscience, if that's what they go for. So maybe we can do something there. Though I don't think we really want to give them Omniscience, no matter what, <laughs> in this spot. Uh... I'd probably rather give them something else. It's unfortunate we don't really have a ton going on for us still. And we don't have too many ways to really like interact with them game one. Um, you really do need to prioritize like either disrupting their whole Lotus Field plan or okay so I think we need to put back Dark Petition can just like get the Omniscience I think we need to actually put back Dark Petition because this way they get poor plus omniscience, but if they miss, they have nothing. And we can even bounce the the omniscience back to their hand next turn. Oh, okay. They have granted. But like see the thing is is that they could just like dark petition for the omniscience, get three mana, poor, get six mana and then they just need any like way to produce mana and they can cast the omniscience anyways so i think getting rid of the dark petition is the better play and hoping they miss on the poor I think like shaving a demi and a phoenix is fine here. I actually don't hate the removal spells.
The bounce spells are important to answer stuff like, um, maybe these disputes aren't great. No, I think they're fine. Pierces seem good. Negates seem good. I think trim another bird is okay. Really focusing on like the profs plus counter spells plan. And I'll just trim another impulse. I guess I will trim the axe. Just based on what I have. I think with the turn two artist talent, this hand is pretty keepable. Um, we'll try to go for like a quick Drake. We have the cantrips to help find some counters. So it's a pretty proactive hand. Against Lotus, you do generally want them to mulligan. <laughs> uh, just because they're... When they keep seven, it's pretty scary. In my my my, my experience. Ooh, this profs is going to be really nice. <laughs> so we can, like... Ideally, we'll play the Drake on four, and then potentially just kill them on five. We do need to find the land. Maybe we should have played Profs there actually and discarded the Flood Maw because Profs is gonna draw us a card. Picklock doesn't, it gets us one card or one look at a land, but that's not as good as the Profs. Yeah, I should have played the Profs, that was bad. I guess like I can play Profs into Picklock but the Drake is going to be a lot more damage than the Picklock was, so that was, yeah, not ideal. Okay, guess. I was really hoping to hit a land there so that I could play Picklock and hold up Pierce. Now I'm not sure what I want to do. Well, maybe I'm back on the Drake plan just to turn late. I think that's probably the best way to go about this now. I think they might be tutoring for a land here with the Charm. I'll discard the Flood Maw for now. Wow, okay, so by doing it that way, now they let me actually trigger a Phoenix, which is pretty huge. It guarantees that I have something for the Pross next turn if I want to do it that way. A second Phoenix. All right, I guess I got both my birds. I will take that. And then I'll even get to have a, a negate up. I might even be able to kill them next turn. I'm looking at like profs. That's seven, eight, crews, 12. Yeah, I think I have a decent shot of killing them next turn. Their hand was pretty slow and ours ended up being pretty fast. I 
so let's just borrow her. I should have ditched the Drake. Okay. Um, wait, so, so far this turn I went cruise. I went, yeah, cruise. That's four cards. Pross is two, so that's six. Sleight of hand, seven. This would be eight. Eight plus three plus three. That's 14. Okay, so we just kill our phoenix. But we'll be able to trigger trigger it back, get the counters with profs, and that's exactly 14 damage. Boom. There we go. That that uh Archdruid charm letting us loot away the Phoenix ended up being pretty costly. Also, just like this is why I hate cutting Phoenixes in any matchup but you know this one is i think the matchup where it makes the most sense but I mean, with artist talent you can just rip through your phoenixes pretty easily and so it's pretty tempting to just always have them in and even add try to add like demi lich for more phoenixes uh so i hope that that game kind of like demonstrated that i like this hand it does have flaws like without any can trips we're really hoping that the opponent is like playing into our counters uh, and then we can like flash borrower and cruise or something. Um, but yeah, I mean, this hand is imperfect and cruise is a very <laughs> imperfect draw. Don't mind me with all these counters. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna play around Archdruid Charm here. I really wanna make sure I can counter it, so I'm not gonna flash the borrower yet. I'm gonna pass. Cause like if I play Talent, they can just respond with the charm. And then I'm not going to be getting any triggers anyways. But this way, I can pierce the charm and then have negate up or flash borrower, potentially. Cycle of Vizier. I'm actually somewhat afraid of hardcast vizier, so I, I'll take that. I guess I'll negate. Trying somewhat to limit the amount of mana they have, keep them off that second lotus field. They scry to the bottom. We do need to get going here, though, so I think I probably have to jam the artist talent. It, it might have been correct to jam the artist talent last turn. Oh, wow. They're casting hidden strings here. Okay. So they really want to resolve something. The Archdruid's charm. Okay. They get their temple or stage. And we still have no threat at all. And they're probably not going to even do anything this upcoming turn, so. Oh, I'd be very happy if they cast something here. No, they're just copying Lotus Field twice. Yeah. Well, they have two cards, so hopefully... Alright, consider is a good draw.
We really need to get a threat in play. I might just need to flash this borrower end step kind of regardless, but dark petition. Well, they have spells that can't be countered, so I should definitely counter the dark petition if I'm able to. Uh, and I'll discard the pick lock. The borrowers, I think, are very valuable um, because you need them to like bounce their Dromoka. Maybe the second borrower is not as valuable, though. The pick lock is probably pretty good here. Maybe I'll have regrets. Jam this crackling Drake. If they like go for Dramoka or something, I am confident I can have a good shot of killing them next turn. Uh oh, that's not good. They get a tra oh a Traxa. Okay, that's actually fine. See, Brazen Barber is good. I just have to hope that the Atraxa doesn't hit anything too crazy. Ideally, not hidden strings. Uh, ooh. Into the Flood Maw. Mystical Dispute. Maybe they take the Mystical Dispute over the Into the Flood Maw. If I were them, I would take Into the Flood Maw, but they might take Mystical Dispute. took into the flood maw and they bounce the drake and then play thespian stage and copy yep <sighs> yeah attracts us pretty good so i think what i need to do here is what else did they take they took they took Grand Abolisher, which is annoying because can't do anything about it. The Grand Abolisher means I can't really bounce the Atraxa on their end step. What, did they, what else did they get? They got... I guess they didn't get anything that really pays them off. The Scrying can get an Odawara, though, which is also annoying. So I think my best play is to replay the Drake. It's not pretty, but... It's kind of all we can do here. Maybe this way we can like trade. Oh no, that's trouble. We are very dead now. Let's see how they sideboarded though, because sometimes in the these post board games they have to sideboard into like less of their, you know, uh, plan A win cons. So they might not actually have a kill here. 
Uh, well, we can't give them Lear, I don't think. Lear just seems unbeatable. Omniscience seems somewhat beatable. Not really beatable, but like somewhat theoretically beatable. I think just like the Odawara here is gonna be really what's unbeatable. Okay, they get fair wishes and we are dead. All right, well, it was a, it was a hard fought match. They kind of played, like, their hand played well against our hand of counters. We were hoping they had a hand of, like, you know, I would counter impulses, counter Sylvan scryings, all that stuff, but they just ended up, we didn't really do anything to, like, put a ton of pressure on them, which then let them uh, beat us. I think Lotus is a tough matchup when you're not, like, preparing for it at all. Uh, and if Lotus starts to make a comeback, obviously you're going to want to readjust. something is stuck in my teeth. Hey, buddy. Bones is here to provide some support for our last match. This hand is a mulligan. Too many interaction pieces, not enough ways to kind of get your engine going. This hand's a keep. You can put back a pick lock. Hands like these are great because it's like lands are great draws. Uh, most of our spells are good draws. You know, much, much better hands. I wish I had a instant speed cantrip there because like piercing an artist talent does seem very important. I guess if they just slam artist talent, we can into the flood mod maybe. I'm gonna resolve this free the Fey now. I know that that's like a pretty premium card to resolve. And I don't want to get spell pierced when I know that's going to be my play. Ooh, double shredder is very scary. When we didn't have an answer to the first one. I mean, we have this into the flood mob, but the shredders are definitely going to get value and, and make it harder for us to sequence our turns. Uh, I mean, I guess if they're just discarding lands, we could be okay. Let's start with sleight of hand. Okay, Brazen Borrower is another answer to a, to a Ledger Shredder. So that's nice. A third Ledger Shredder. Okay. A fourth Ledger Shredder. <laughs> We're, they're, they're shredding. They're out there shredding, that's for sure. Okay, we'll let them go through their, their loots. Maybe I should be bouncing one of these, but I kind of just want to keep developing my own plan. Okay, I'll take this axe. Mm. I mean, 
I guess I'll trigger all these shredders. Because I'm not going to not cast spells here. But we do have a good chance of like being able to axe another one. Bin the Phoenix. Discard the spell pierce. All right, so we get back two birds. Profs really changes the dynamic of shredders, in my opinion, because it just enables you to, you know, like build blockers that are just as big as those shredders are. Oh, they have a profs. That's scary. Especially with all these shredders. counters around this is a 10 12 i'll happily just trade off with this shredder go to three bounce play profs I mean, it is a little, this is a little sketchy, like, maybe it's really bad. If they have an axe, we die. Yeah, this is actually probably pretty bad. I probably just needed to pass. I was trying to get something going, but I don't think I can make this play. Probably just, like, play picklock pass is their best play. But I think we got away with it. Right? Like, I don't think they cast. Did they cast three spells there? No. Yeah, they didn't. Okay, free the Fey. Grab this cruise. I want to trigger these phoenixes. So maybe just casting this cruise is best. Then I don't get any counters. I could just wait to trigger the phoenixes a turn. Oh yeah, why don't I just like shock this, play a pick lock and pass. That way I'm getting like a six, like a big pick lock, one that's bigger than any of uh, the removal spells. And I have removal up for their potential profs trigger, right? Because now it's kind of becoming a game of like, avoid the profs trigger. Uh-oh, but if they're getting multiple phoenixes back and a removal spell, I might just be dying. Oh, but how are they? No, they can't really remove this. So they need to get another. Hey! Hey, stop that. Stop that. You wanna come? He's messing with the cords again, guys. We need them not to get a third Phoenix. Respectfully. Please. Not the third Phoenix. Oh no, or please not double removal spell either. 
Oh, I'm so scared. Oh, that's so many chances to find a phoenix. Oh, we avoided it. Wow. That feels super lucky. Like, they have 13 cards left in their deck, and somehow they did not find a phoenix. Now, the question is, can we kill them on the way back? Probably not, unless we find an artist talent. Almost certainly not, unless we find an artist talent. Artist talent, double shoot, cruise, hold a borrower. I'm trying to calculate if we want to use this impulse. I guess if we don't draw artist talent, yeah, I think we should use one of these now. We might end up being constrained on mana, depending on our draw. <sighs> Cruise for two mana. And then I do this. So I've drawn three, four, five, six. Three, four, We need to find one Phoenix or more cards somehow. I think that the axe is the best way to find more cards and get more cards in the yard. This pierce isn't going to do anything for us. Should I cycle this fiery impulse? think so or am I gonna try to now switch modes and play like a defense like a weird defensive game because maybe I'm in a spot where I can do that wait okay so so far four four cards five cards six I'm one short. The cruise lets me delve a phoenix, though, to... Right, I want cruise. Really need to be thoughtful here because so they're gonna be getting back one, two. And I have to imagine they'll be getting back all their phoenixes. I think I need to like fiery impulse here also and find something. Consider gives me a chance. Oh, I can't shock the steam vents. Oh, I miscalculated because I'm at one. Oh, no. I was going to say, I think the consider gave me a decent chance, but... Nine. Okay. 
Hit them for nine, and we're gonna be dead for sure here. I can't imagine a world where we're not dead in this spot. But I think I needed to fiery impulse. Mistake. Sorry, guys. For sideboarding, I think that the disputes are pretty great. Um, I don't really love sideboarding very much, but I'll shave on fiery impulses. And probably just stick with that. I don't really love Crackling Drake in the mirror. Just like the slow clunky cards aren't really what you want to be doing. Um, maybe I should be respecting Hearse. So Prismari could be a card to board in. Yeah, maybe I do want a Prismari. All right, this hand's fine. All right, let's take artist talent. Sucks putting a phoenix on the bottom, but I do think uh, the artist talent is gonna be like a you know it's a pretty crucial card, obviously. We need to find a land here. Oh no, that's not good. When you have two cantrips, I'm keeping that every time, but this just might not end up very well for us. Hoping they don't have something that capitalizes on that, like their own artist talent. Yeah, that's gross. I guess we do have the Flood Maw plus Pierce, so we could bounce it. Let's get our own artist talent down first, and then next turn we can consider making that play. So they're basically just like a turn ahead of us, but maybe bouncing their artist talent can, can turn that around into our favor. I'm less worried about even spell piercing it. I think I just need to get it off the table. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, yeah, we did miss a land drop, so we can't. Unfortunately, we can't play the Spire Bluff. Ledger Shredder's fine. Replay Talent. Oh, Profs. Okay, that's pretty good. After we just used all of our bounce spells, now they make a... Oh, wow, they chose not to buff the Shredder. I I don't think I can agree with that. Like, I would definitely make my Shredder bigger than a Lightning Axe here, but we'll take it. I'm 
happy to discard sleight of hand here. I mean, I guess with like the profs plus artist talent, we know they're gonna be doing some pretty pretty strong things. And they have like the yeah the the Flumbot giving them that token is actually pretty annoying still for us. <sighs> we discard this Pierce because they have four lands already, probably five. Yeah. One, one meager bird, um, but we're gonna hope it, it does its job. Like, I'm expecting to get hit, hit pretty hard here, but then hopefully we can, if they can't kill us, we can maybe barely race them. Hey, no clawing, no clawing. You're just like a baby. You're just acting out. Am I gonna die here? I'm so dead, aren't I? They're just getting back three phoenixes and putting like 12 counters on this fish token. I mean, I needed the, the phoenix in play for me because I needed something to be able to put profs counters onto next turn to hopefully kill them, but like, yeah, that's way more than that. Okay, well, those matches didn't go so well, um, and I don't really think it's of any fault of the specific list I'm putting forward, but yeah, I mean, maybe there's some sideboard plans I should be working on for for the Phoenix matchup. Uh, Lotus, not a matchup you really want to face, so hey, you know, those, those you know, it didn't go great. Um, like I said, I would not play the Demi-Lich. I actually think that despite really thinking Lighter Shredder is like not the greatest card in this deck, I think without being able to play more artist talents, like you do probably want the Shredder. Um, the reason is you just want to have cards that are going to help your engine go. And uh, these are the good cantrips, right? Like I don't think there's any other good one mana cantrips. Artist Talent's the best enabler, but then besides that, Shredder is still number two. Uh, for the double into the Flood Maw, I'm also not really sold on that. I feel like I was like, into the Flood Maw's kind of a card I want to draw later, but I wasn't really super happy to see it early on. And then I think that Fiery Impulse is still what I would go with in that slot to make sure that you're keeping your you know aggro matchups reasonable. So we're gonna go to this sideboard. I think I would leave this as is for now, um, but I do think there's a chance you wanna play like a hearse, maybe uh, have something for the Phoenix matchup. All right, well, I really appreciate you guys watching. Have a great rest of your day and uh, yeah, see you guys next time. Peace.